How much damage can you do? The ultimate number. The determining factor to getting laid, and the focus of this video, because numbers are cool. I'm Davey, hoping everything is going well for you, and I want to give you an overview of all the things you can do to increase your character's damage, and what abilities help increase your damage output. Before we get into it, please note that this is part 2 of my mid-max guide. Part 1 goes over min-maxing your level and stats, which is integral, or the other half of the pie, since having a max level character and all your stats raised will directly influence your character's overall damage and performance on the battlefield. In other words, one half will not work without the other. I also give an effective path on leveling to get to Arcana as fast as you can. So if you're looking for direction, or want to maximize the benefits of this video you're watching now, please refer to my min-max guide on leveling and stats, which will be linked below. Now, this game is tricky dicky when it comes to damage formulas and the ways to increase the damage you are doing. I mean, look at this. Like, holy shit, that's a lot of stuff. So, in that case, and since this is meant to be introductory, I'll be as surface level as I can with the math and explanations. Ideally, the approach I'd like to take is the, okay, that does that, and if I do this, it does that. Cool. Because hey, Mabo kinda sucks ass at explaining things. So, pull up them britches and stern walk with me into the realm of our own creation. So, how does damage work? There's max damage for physical, magic attack for magic, alchemic damage for alchemy, and you will multiply these numbers with skills, spells, crits, bonus damage, stackable multipliers, and or buffing. Physical damage is multiplied by using skills. Magic attack is multiplied by your spell's constant, the spell's damage, and the number of charges of that spell. I'll list all the spell's constants down below. And alchemic damage is similar to magic. However, instead of one stat, it's split into four elements. In other words, and a huge simplification, you have your damage, and you have stackable multipliers. In fact, that's the encompassing point about this video, to show you how to increase your damage and multipliers. So, with all that said, let's get this out onto a tray. Nice. Let's start and check out that main. Gleaming swords and axes with razor sharp edges wrought by the artisans of the world, to the hewed and whittled woods and sinews of the mysterious wood folk, to the gnarled and rune-graven magic-imbued staves and wands, crafted in the name of one who is not of this world, or some spiked knuckles. All weapons share similar layouts. Weapons are the single most important item when it comes to damage, in Mabo, your weapon isn't just something you equip and you're good to go. Well, I mean, you can do that. But there are many types of weapons and upgrades that play a crucial role in the damage output and abilities in the game. Let's talk about it. Physical weapons not only add to one's max damage, but the player's mastery in that respective weapon will add to their max as well. And a Celtic or better wand or stave will add a variable to your magic attack. And that's an important word when it comes to weapons and basically anything involving numbers in MAB. The word variables. 
Unlike most MMOs, any main weapon that you will use from mid-game on must be crafted. When crafting a weapon or piece of gear, there will almost always be variables to the attributes of that item. Since we're talking about physical damage and magic attack, some items range as little as a few points to physical damage or magic attack to some ranging over 60. It's best to always think twice before buying an item for the sake of having that item and check the wiki or with a friend to make sure what you're getting is a good roll. It should also be noted that certain weapons benefit or can be a detriment to some skills and spells, such as a two-handed sword giving a buff to smash attacks, including the elemental knight's dynavolt smash. And yet, two-handed swords can knock targets back once the knockback gauge is filled while using the human-only skill Final Hit. Whereas dual wielding one-handed swords does not fill up the knockback gauge. Then, some weapons like a wand cannot cast Hailstorm. However, you can reforge a wand for exponentially faster casting speed, which is something a staff isn't nearly as efficient in. We'll get into reforges later in this video. For now, let's talk about upgrades. Upgrades can add more stats, damage, or damage modifiers, and or piercing to your weapon. Depending on your weapon, of course. Typically, in order of importance, you will want piercing, percent modifiers, then max damage, magic attack, or alc damage when it comes to weapon upgrades. It's probably best to verify the path you take with a friend or through the wiki. In order to upgrade an item, use the weapon's proficiency, also known as prof, as the currency. The best ways to get prof is to use that item on normal to boss level mobs, or with proficiency hammers. An effective and free way, however, is to turn auto attack on under options, game, click auto attack, and then go into the Zabosh raid and semi AFK hit. After you fully upgrade your weapon and gem upgrade it, the special upgrade is now available to you. We will talk about special upgrades later in this video when I talk about crits. For now, let's scoot down to enhancements. Many items from weapons to gear carry enhancements, also known as set item effects, which give the player certain abilities tied to that weapon or gear. There are many craftable items, both in early game to end game with these enhancements, ranging from melee skill bonuses to tech card enhancements, damage, and even critical damage bonuses. Just make sure these enhancements add up to 10 in order for the effect to take place. Weapons like Celtic or Divine take Signets to get enhancements, which come mainly from dungeons and shadow missions. Enhancements are one of, if not the main reason, to choose one piece of gear over others, and can get quite elaborate in the ways to reach 10 for that respective enhancement. So, with all that said, let me give you a little rundown of some of the weapons you can start with and end with when you get Arcana. For Elemental Knight, I'd recommend a Blanded Sword, Borealis Blade, or a Celtic Two-Hander Sword. You can actually get a free two-handed Celtic sword that's pre-rank 1 from the Chronicle mission once you've cleared it two times. From there, you can look towards buying or crafting a Divine Blade or Perseus Blade. And finally, for the endest of games, you should look into making a Nightbringer two-hander or the illustrious and elusive Saluna Blade. For Alchemic Sharpshooter, start with the Blanded Crossbow, Bayful Hunter and Arrow, or a Celtic Bow from the Chronicle mission. From there, look towards a Demolition Bow and Arrow, or go straight to the Ruination Bow and Arrow, which is the best range weapon currently. For Harmonic Saint and Dark Diviner, start with a Celtic Druid Staff, which again, you can get a free pre-ranked one from the Chronicle mission. From there, look towards a Demolition Staff, or go straight to a Ruination Staff, which is the best staff in the game currently. Also, just FYI, this is for the North American version, and not any other region, since they all differ. Let's move over to giving your weapons life by offering it a Spirit, otherwise known as an Ego. Spirit weapons not only boost your max damage, as well as give more crit chance, 
but also provide unique abilities when unlocking the weapon's ultimate exclusive, such as a sprint effect after each kill with a two-handed sword, staves and wands getting a total of three charges with one charge of a spell, or giving Knuckles the ability to speed up the animations of fighter skills. Spirit weapons also have an awakening buff, which can be used at any time it's available, giving your weapon an increase in damage. You are given three free spirit slots and a beginner one, which is the same as the other spirits, but gets XP bonuses from any item you feed it, and treats all extension gems as its preferred gem. <laughs> That's right. You gotta feed these dudes in order to level them up, and you gotta feed them a lot. My recommendation is to feed them whatever items you find on the ground, and gems and spirit gems, from dungeons and part-time jobs. Just make sure to increase their bond by either talking to them three times every in-game day, or using them in combat since it gives an increase to the XP received. Also, and this is important, make sure that at these levels your spirit bond is 100 in order to receive multiple points. If you forget which levels to do this at, you can always hover over the bond to see. You should have 196 points total at level 100 if you do the quests that are given to you every 5 spirit levels gained. Also, you can have a max of 7 spirits, and you can buy another 3 spirits from the auction house or through the NX shop. But yeah, my recommendation would be to fill out both the attack and exclusive tabs, since they both maximize your damage and multipliers then dump the rest of your points into one of the awakening abilities. If you want to know more, check out Firelight's video on spirit weapons. It goes far more in depth than I have, and it's pretty good. Not only can you add a spirit to a weapon, but you can also add Erg, which imbues your weapon with more damage, multipliers, and or unique abilities. Now, People shat on Mab the longest time for how difficult and expensive it was to level Erg. Especially with items being RNG like the Sigd armors, which is still very RNG. But not only is there a pity system now, which incrementally raises the success rates with consecutive failures, Erg now has tiers, with B tier being the lowest and having the easiest mats to obtain, to A tier being mid, and S tier being the best, and essentially being what we had originally. Now, I'm just going to come out and say that B tier is, well, it's not very good in comparison to the others. However, A tier is actually quite viable, and in many cases is just a step down from S tier, but it's way, way more cost efficient over its S tier counterpart. For example, an S50 wand level 50 being the max level for all erg tiers, carries 20 magic attack to an A50's 16 magic attack, and S50 has only 8% more casting speed than an A50 wand. A tier has less range than S tier, but don't be a pussy. Get in there. The only main difference is S tier carries an increase in fusion bolt damage, which is the primary use of a wand, so keep that in mind when you're looking into being a mage. Another argument for A tier is that an A50 Revenant Cylinder is actually quite viable in Chrome 40% to 100%, since its hits per second are just slightly under par with an S45 Cylinder. For those reasons, an A50 Cylinder is quite usable for pragging in Chrome. For the most part, it just takes more time to fully prag groups of mobs over an S50 rev cylinder. If you want to know more about the Chrom dungeon, check out my Chrom guides. One of the unfortunate truths to some weapons out there is Erg, and even Ego, is required to make that weapon not just viable, but actually good. Such as Knuckles. For instance, S tier 50 knuckles not only add 50 max and 100% more to fighter damage, but also halves the cooldowns on all your fighter skills. Pair that with the aforementioned knuckle ego for faster animations and a knuckle that resets 50% of the time with crits, you got a deadly combination for dishing out a lot of single target damage consistently and constantly. But yeah, if you're just starting out and looking into erg, I would heavily recommend checking out A tier. 
which can be turned into level 35 S tier at level 50 A tier when you're ready to make the jump. But that also bypasses a lot of the pain of leveling S tier to 35 as well. Also, if you were curious, you can transfer Egos and Erg to other weapons. If you want more info on Erg, check out the wiki below, or even ask me about it. Now, let's get into enchants. There are hundreds of enchants in the realm. Some are rare and exalted for their attributes, and others are there just to make you mad. Typically, enchants offer attributes such as a variable of stats, physical, magical, or alchemic damage, and even piercing. Enchants are bound to go on whichever item it describes, and there are two types of enchants, prefix and suffix, and each enchant carries a difficulty rating from rank F to rank 1, which denotes the difficulty of succeeding in applying that enchant to an item. Like weapon upgrades, you typically want to prioritize piercing over anything else if that weapon has default piercing or can be added with upgrades. If you want to know more about piercing, check out my debuff guide in which I talk about how it works at length. But mostly, you want to add enchants that give as much max damage for physical sets, magic attack for magical, or alchemic damage for alchemic sets. For instance, 10 physical max on a single piece of gear may not seem like much, but if you look at the big picture, Adding 10 damage to each piece of gear that's not a weapon or a wing slash robe, it adds 60 max damage. Now, add a suffix that also gives 10 max to each of those slots, it's a total of 120 more max. <laughs> it really adds up. If you want to see which enchants are best in slot, check out Cryozen 7's best in slot guide which is pretty amazing, and the amount of effort that dude puts into his guides is insane. You can actually find a lot of the info I talk about here on his guides, so treat it more as a companion piece than anything else. Now, let's get into reforges. Reforges are a way to imbue a piece of gear with special attributes, ranging from things like max damage, magic attack, multipliers to certain skills, elements, or weaponry to adding more utility such as less cooldown times, duration extensions, or race exclusive abilities. There are three ranks to reforges, with rank 1 being the best, and gives the ability to roll the max amount of effects to a reforge, and the maximum number of lines you can have is 3 per item. Now, as I've said in my debuff video, reforges can be pretty daunting, especially since you can buy them from the NX shop, and is often associated with the pay-to-win formula since you can sell reforges for in-game gold. However, and not to brush that fact aside, there are plenty of free reforges that are easily obtainable in the game, such as precise reforges. The main difference between precise and exquisite, which is the one you can buy with NX, exquisite can roll 7 to 20, where Precise rolls between 1 and 20. Not only does Exquisite have a better roll range, there's a small possibility that you could limit break a reforge. You can receive Hope Gems per use, which can be exchanged to automatically roll 3 lines, or to automatically bring an item to rank 1. Don't worry though, if you don't want to spend any money, you can buy Hope Gems from other players with gold. Then you can use precise reforges to roll by doing content like Commerce, Stardust Quest, Finny Whistle Selling, using Dungeon Vouchers, and or spending Adventure Seals, just to name a few. A side benefit to accessible free reforges is reforge gear is now a lot cheaper than it has been. If you're just starting out, I'd actually look more into buying pre-made since it's potentially a lot cheaper in the long run and it saves you from gambling with rolls. Another free reforge option are journeyman reforges, which can be obtained by using calcified reforge stones found in shadow missions and dungeons or from the growth guide. Although these are far less effective than precise, it does give an option for rolling pre-R1 accessories since you are able to roll 2 out of 3 with these. 
a cool tip if you're just starting out is to either buy or make professional silk weaving gloves and get 26 or better durability since these items are not repairable. And then use journeyman reforges until the gloves are rank 2 or use the hope gem from the growth tab and then roll either max damage level 7 or magic attack level 7. That's an extra 14 to either your max or magic attack. Another cool thing you can do with the Journeyman Reforges is to get a pre-rank 1 Celtic weapon from the Chronicle mission, and use these Reforges on that weapon since they can roll 15 out of 20, like this Celtic staff that rolled an extra 60 to magic attack. The beauty is too, you get hundreds of these Journeyman Reforges from the growth guide, which you can just have at it. It's fun. Try it out. Good luck. Anyways, reforges are probably one of the most important attributes to your repertoire, since you can multiply your damage exponentially and cut cooldown times by a ton, or increase duration sevenfold. Ideally, you want to build combat sets with the best in slot reforge on each piece of gear. Again, please refer to Cryozen 7's best in slot guide to learn more about the reforges that work best with each talent. You can also check out other players' gear to get ideas. Remember, we are trying to increase damage, multipliers, durations, increase AoE sizes, or shorten cooldowns. Now let's go into things other than weapons and gear, starting with Grandmaster. In part 1, I emphasized the importance of Grandmastering or GMing your talents in order to increase your stats. Now, I'm here to emphasize the importance of activating a GM in order to receive a boost to your damage. Only one GM can be activated at a time, and will give the user a unique effect. For combat talents, those effects typically give a considerable amount of damage to that respective weapon type. For instance, if you wanted to be a Dark Mage, you'd want to activate your Grandmaster Mage for the added 20 magic attack. Or, if you wanted to be an archer, activate the archer grandmaster for the added max. Also, your growth guide gives out six brass grandmaster certificates. So, be sure to use those to save six million gold. Like grandmaster, there are primary and secondary titles that you can quote unquote wear to increase everything from stats, max damage, magic attack, alk damage, crit, speed, bonus damage, and even piercing. Primary titles come mainly from in-game accomplishments, such as clearing a main quest or dungeon, or doing something cool such as soloing a dungeon or hoeing. If you want to get the biggest bang for your buck, probably the best starting out title is the Star of the Dawn, which gives 20 to physical max damage, 20 to magic attack, and 10 to physical and magical defense and protection. You can get this title by simply completing Generation 25. If you want to be a mage, the Master of Meteor Strike gives 50 magic attack. So if you just want to do weird mage stuff, there you go. Luckily, if you are new, secondary titles offer just as much bang as a primary, and the Growth Guide secondary title is no exception. So. Get that secondary title and wear it with Star of the Dawn or Master of Meteor Strike, since they offer quite a bit and should carry you well into mid-game. Again, check out Krausen's Best in Slot Guide for more on titles once you're ready to branch out. Since we're on the subject of the growth system, check out the Morningstar totem set. Just having these totems in your inventory and activating them will give your player those stats. And the growth totems are not bad at all, actually. However, I would check the auction house, since I believe you can find better totems, especially for things like max damage and magic attack, for fairly cheap. There are also quite a few events that happen that give these totems out for free. There are also Albin totems, which are separate from regular totems, since you must run the Albin dungeon to acquire the materials to begin rolling them. You can find the dungeon behind Nares in Dunbarton. You can only have one Albin totem active, but they can have multiple lines with most popular options typically being max damage and magic attack. I'll link more about Albin totems below. Scooting to the right a few blocks from totems on your growth menu, you will find a box containing homestead figures. 
Be sure to plant these in your homestead once you get them. And again, like totems, there are upgrades you can get and events that typically give out very good, even best in slot homestead items for free. Again, refer to Cryozen's best in slot guide for homestead items. Should really make that guy a cake or something. One of the main objectives in part one was to get you to Arcana as quick as possible. Primarily for the skill sets and damage outputs of Arcanas, and the stat increases that come with leveling Arcana. In addition to this guide, if you read the descriptions of a lot of Arcana skills, you will see that they are basically multiplying base skills like Plume multiplying Crash Shot damage, Dynavolt Smash multiplying Smash, or Shadow Flare multiplying Fireball damage. So. When I refer to things like set effects enhancing smash, or a reforge giving smash damage, just know they are contributing to their respective arcana skills. Even things like the reforge crash shot fragment range have an effect on the alchemic stinger skill Ignis Plume. That's a fun word to say. Plume. Plume. <laughs> Anyways, let's turn our attention to arcana link levels. Not only does Arcana Link 5 give an increase to max damage or magic attack for each respective Arcana activated, the Link levels for each discipline also give a lot of added multipliers, cooldown times, and other benefits. In fact, leveling your favorite Arcana to Link 10 may be one of the most important things you can do for damage output and utility for that Arcana. In other words, link up your Arcanas. Let's move over and talk about combo cards. Skills and spells with a star next to them are damnable skills, which essentially means they can increase another three ranks by doing advancement tests in E-Main Matcha. One of the cooler aspects is Danable skills can also be used in free combo cards at the Advancement Hall in E-Main. You can find free combo cards at the end of Shadow Missions and Dungeons. Typically, what you want to look for are six-step cards, with the last step showing the skill you want as your sixth combo, as well as a 30% or close to difference from step 5. For example, this card I found in a Shadow Mission has Lance Charge in the 6th slot, and has a 30% difference in damage than the 5th slot, which means that the difference between 5 and 6 is now maximized. So if I were to Dan 3 Lance Charge, get a crap ton of advancement seals by either doing advancement tests or getting off the auction house, I can now start to roll Lance Charges in the other slots, knowing full well my 6th slot has all the potential to roll the max, which is 86%. If you want to know more about combo cards, check out Snowy Stormflower's video. It's pretty good. You can make all sorts of combo cards, and the beauty is that the multiplier is to your end damage. In fact, combo cards are the secret when it comes to hitting for big numbers with non-arcana skills. And finally, without further to do, let's talk about criticals, otherwise known as crits. 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 Here we go. Hey, what's up with that? I have 590.5% critical. The game says that's the chance to crit. What the fudge? Well, the base chance to crit is actually only 30%. So, what's up with the 590.5? Each point of physical or magical protection you or a mob has actually reduces the chance to crit by 2%. So, 15 protection reduces the chance to crit by 30%. That means having a ton of crit can negate crit chance reduction from protection. You can also increase the chance to crit past 30% by having 3 Arcanas at level 50, Spirit Weapon Unleashing, and leveling your Nele Renown, bringing your total chance to crit from 30% to 48.5%. Your base crit damage is 150% of your damage and multipliers, so let's talk about ways to increase that 150% crit damage. 
starting with uh, aforementioned spirit weapons, spirit attunement, giving an extra 15% more critical damage. There are totems, titles, and homestead items that give critical damage, and your Yovana's Renown gives another 10%. A cool hot tip to leveling your Nele and Yovana Renowns is to buy a few music scrolls from a general shop, go to the main menu, then click the barred bulletin board, and then search for Yovana or Nele. It's case sensitive by the way, and transcribe the most liked one. Then just autoplay until you've capped out the renown for the day, rinse and repeat until they're level 50. And finally, there are special upgrades to your weapons. Now, there's been much debate on whether to redstone upgrade your weapon, giving more crit damage, or to bluestone your weapon, giving more physical damage, magic attack, or alk damage, and bonus damage. The in-game meta currently, as of 2024, is redstone all your weapons except for staves and wands. This is mainly due to redstone level 7 weapons adding another 74% more damage to your crit, bolstering a lot of the damage you do when you do get a crit. A caveat to this is redstone typically doesn't start out scaling blue stones until your physical max damage reaches around 1600. If you do get a weapon, you'll use well into mid to end game before the 1600 max accomplishment. It's probably best just to redstone anyways to save you the hassle. However, there are conversion kits to switch between red and blue stones, but they are kind of a pain to make. The reason to blue stone magic items is mainly for the added magic attack, since it's pretty scarce already to find magic attack, and for a dark mage, the skill Seething Mana requires 1400 magic attack in order to add the three piercings to your attack, which is pretty darn difficult to achieve without bluestoning. Lastly, magic scaling lets you crit more with bluestones than red. Also, you get bonus damage, which is an added percentage to your end damage. So, let's put all this shit together do everything in part 1, or continue to work on leveling and stats while working on this list. Get at least 3 Arcanas to level 50, and level 1 or more to link level 10 for the extra damage, multipliers, and benefits. Clear Generation 25 for the Star of the Dawn title, activate the Growth Totems, Homestead Totems, and use the secondary Growth title and be on the lookout to replace these. Work towards at least a 20 max, 20 magic attack Albin totem, with 25, 25 being the max. Work towards level 50 renowns for the added crit damage and crit chance. Be sure to activate a complementing Grandmaster to benefit your chosen arcana. Decide which weapons to prioritize for your arcana or arcanas, and see which weapons to start with and end with such as starting with the Celtic Staff and ending with the Demolition Staff. Spirit your main and secondary weapons and level them up, such as a Staff, Wand, and Cylinder if you wanted to run Krom with Dark Mage. Erg the weapons you will need in combat, such as your main weapon for damage, Rev Cylinder for Krom, maybe a Wand to accompany a Staff, or Knuckles to accompany a Bow or a Two-Handed Sword. It's probably best to make a priority list and talk about it with others. Also, transferring your erg to another weapon is pretty expensive, so only erg your mid to in-game gear. Determine which gear, enchants, and reforges are best for your build by referring to Krausen's best in slot guide. In fact, his guide will give you suggestions for all of this stuff. It's pretty darn great. Look into making combo cards and check out Snowy Stormflower's video on how it works. And last, but certainly not least, enjoy it. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the people you will meet, the places you will go, the successes, and the failures. Most importantly, enjoy being yourself and the wonderful things you are capable of in whichever realm you decide to be in. You have a lot to offer. So, pull up those britches and get to work. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more, and share these videos with whoever you think would be interested in MAB.
Let me know if you have any questions, ideas, maybe I got something wrong, and stay tuned for the next part. Buffing up, and I promise it won't be nearly as long as this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.